Welcome to Mr. Woods Teaches. I'm Fred Woods, ready to teach. Hi, math friends. This is Mr. Woods. Today we're working on end of year fifth grade measurement and geometry. What does that entail for the end of year for fifth grade? Well, we've covered number sense, we've covered algebra and functions, and today we're working on measurement and geometry. The next video will be on statistics. And with measurement and geometry, we're looking at angles and area and perimeter, and polygons and some volume. Measurement in math is a collective branch that consists of units of measurement, rules, formulas to determine the measurement, parameters such as area, volume, length, perimeter, surface area, time, etc. And geometry in math deals with shapes and figures. Geometry explains how to build or draw shapes, measure them, and compare them. Let's look at this here for measurement and geometry. Number one, write the letter for each number that represents the quantity on the number line. Let's take a look. Let's just start out with A. I, you know, find out A. I'm going to start with A here. Okay. So I have this here. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So these are in tenths. I know that. And I have, this is five tenths, which is halfway through because it's in between zero and one. 6, 7, and something. Huh. I'm right in the middle of that. So it's like 7.5. Do I have 7.5 or 0.75 of anything? Well, right here, 75 one hundredths, that is equal to 75 hundredths. I'm just going to do that because of the space. So I'll draw that zero. 0 0.75. That is definitely 0 0.75 for A, so I'm going to put A here. Let's evaluate B. So it's going to be 2.12. 2.2, this is B. And you see how I'm working with this number line? I First I determine the number of units, those are those tick marks here. So I have uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then I have a larger one for that half mark. And then four more, and then a larger one for the full mark. Let's take a look at C. So this is 1.5. Oh, right here, 1.5. C. D, I have one tenth, two tenths, three tenths right here. This is D. E. Okay, I'm going in the opposite direction of my positive numbers, which means this is in negative territory. I know that this right here in between the zero and negative one is negative one half. This is 0 0.5, but if you remember, so five tenths. is equal to, and I can divide both the top and bottom by five. So five divided by five is equal to one. And 10 divided by 5 is, is going to be 2, so that is equal to 1 half. And if I have a negative here, this is going to be also be a negative. So I'm looking for this right here, negative 1 half. And that's going to be E. And our last one is, it says 2 and 6 tenths. So I have 2, and I know that's 5 tenths, and then 6 tenths is going to be F. But just by looking at everything else that's the only possible answer that's left as well however it could be a trick question so make sure that you're actually doing the math or figuring out what these measures are let's move on so within measure and geometry we have to try to find things like the area and here we have two different problems and one of them is a triangle now for the triangle it's showing this here there's a right angle here and it's given me this height of the triangle. And there's a reason that's given is because I need to know the area of a triangle. So area for a triangle, you know, I just write A or I could put a triangle over here, whatever. So is equal to one half the base times the height. Well, let's see, let's find out What's our base? So my base here is this longest part here, and that's where the right angle is for the height. So this is equal to, so B is equal to 12 inches. 
my height, which I've already described here. So height h is equal to 4 inches. So now all we need to do is plug in this information into my formula here. So area is equal to my base. I'm not going to use the units right now, but I'm going to write it down just as 12. Okay. Times the height. My height is 4 inches. And I'm going to do it this way because so 12 times 4 is a number and then I'm going to have this here. Now I could just put a line underneath this whole thing and have it by 2 and such like that but I wanted to show you how how I would do this. So 12 times 4 well 2 times 4 is 8 so there's no nothing to bring over and then 4 times 1 is 4 so that's going to be equal to 48 times 1 half. And I can simplify this so it's going to be 48 and I'm going to divide that by 2. Now I could go through uh, you know doing this here so I can say 48 divided by 2. However I know my multiplication tables um, and it's easy for me to say well I know that uh, 2 times 4 is equal to 8. Okay. And then uh, 2 times 2 is equal to 4, so that's going to give me 24. Or I can do it here. Four go, or 2 goes into 4 2 times. So that's going to give me a 4. I subtract that. I have 8. And 2 times 4 is 8. So I get the same answer. But having that prior knowledge uh, to be able to quickly access my multiplication tables to help me with my division is something that you need to master uh, before you get into sixth grade at least. Fifth grade, fourth and fifth grade, you should know your multiplication tables. Number three, what is the air? Oh, sorry, I'm not done here. So it's 24 what? Well, here we go. So it's 24 square inches. So I can just put that as in my inches. And there we go. So there's my 24 square inches. Got to remember that there are units here that are defined. So it's inches. Over here I have centimeters. So number three, what is the area of this parallelogram? Again, we're working with a formula that's very specific because it's going to be, so the area of this parallelogram is equal to the base times the height. So I have my BH. I want to define uh, what those numbers are for this. So my base is right here. It's just 15 centimeters. So B equals that. And my height, and I know this is this dotted line here is giving me the height because it must be at a perpendicular or a right angle here when this base meets the, I'm sorry, when the height is drawn from the corner here down to the base. So that's going to be my height. So plug it in. Area is equal to the base, which is 15, times, okay, times 5. And again, I'm leaving off the, the, units here of centimeters I could put it in there and then have it if it if that if that helps you remember that's okay okay so what's 15 times 5 well let's take a look at this so 3 times 5 is 15 I can say 5, uh, five times 5 is 25 times 3 is going to give me 75 see how my knowledge is helping me do that without having to sit there and do this in, in knowledge of those properties uh, 15 times 5 and 5 times 5 is 25 5 times 1 is 5 and adding two more so that's 75 I'm getting the same answer as I did right here it, using my mental math capabilities but I'm not done I have to write down that it is 75 centimeters squared or I'm sorry, 75 square centimeters. I have to correct how I say that because 75 
centimeters squared is something different. Okay, let's move on to the next problem. What is the surface area of a cube whose edges measure 3 inches? <clears throat> so that means I have 3 inches here, 3 inches here, and then 3 inches here as well. So this is going to my height, this is my width, this is my length, so 3 inches. So all sides are equal to 3 inches. So I just need to determine the area for one side and then multiply that by how many sides? Well, how many sides are in a cube? So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, and then the top 5 and the bottom 6. So it's going to be times 6. And to create, uh, so my formula for this is also for one side is the base times the height or the length times the width for to get that area. So 3 times 3 is 9. Okay, so I have 9 inches squared, okay, and I need to multiply that by 6 sides, so times 6 sides, it does not have units, so I don't have to do anything else there, and 9 times 6 is what? Well, if you hold up your fingers, and we're saying 9 times 6, and you're going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 on your left hand, you're going to take the thumb of your right hand and, and hide it in your palm and you're going to say, well, there's five, so that's 50, and then four fingers on your right hand is going to be four, so 54. So 54, and I have inches squared already there, so inches squared. That's the surface area for this cube here. And I'm not going to rewrite it. I'm just going to put an arrow up to it. There we go. Next is what is the volume of this block? Hmm. Now we've had area, but now we have volume. Well, we need to recall our formula for volume for a cube or for a block like this. It's going to be equal to, here's my length, here's my width, and there's my height. So it's, it's length times width times height, so this is my L, equals that, here's my width, I'm just going to put it as equals to W, and equals to H, there's my height. So now I can come down here and say volume is equal to 6, and I'm going to do a dot, instead of, you're going to have to get used to seeing that dot, 6 times 5, and then another dot times 3. Again, it might I, I can look at this and I can say, well, 5 times 3 is 15, and then 6 times that is, and I'm sitting there thinking of it, and I'm like, no, let's do this a little easier. I can say 6 times 5 is 30 times 3, and that is going to be equal to 3 times 0 is 0, 3 times 3 is 9, so that's going to be 90. But 90 what? Well, if I have inches, over here, inches times inches is inches squared. So this is inches times inches times inches. So that's going to be inches cubed. And, that's, and volume is always going to be cubed. And R to the power of 3. And that is my final answer here. And let's put that up there. So I have my resultant measure and the units in there and the appropriate type of how it's cubed there, it's going to tell me that that is equal to volume. Measurement and ge geometry continues. Number six, identify the statements below as relating to length, area, or volume. So what's telling me is that I need to come in here and I go, to, what's the, the appropriate measure for this? So the perimeter of a hexagon. So here's my hexagon. And I want to find out the perimeter of it. So what I'm doing is I'm measuring coming around and that's going to give me a length going around this hexagon. So I would put an L right here. The amount of lemonade in a barrel will hold. Hmm. Well, I, the barrel or its capacity is going to be volume, not area, but volume. So I'll put a V there. The amount of grass to cover a soccer field. Here's my soccer field. 
I want to cover this area. So that's definitely going to be area. The number of bricks to pave a patio. Well, again, I'm covering this area. This I say this is my so that's also going to be area. Using a protractor, determine the number of degrees in each angle. Well, what do you know? I have my protractor here. Let's take a look at this. I can't quickly tell what those what that measurement is of this angle, but I can look over here and it's showing me I see 140. There's a tick and then there's another tick there, so I that's going to probably be 141, 142. And that's what I put down right here is 142 degrees. And I have to remember that symbol for degrees is just that zeros. Okay, let's take a look at this angle B here. And 10, 20, 30 degrees on the button. So I can put that in there, 30 degrees. Now I can write out that degree symbol or I can write out degrees. D E G. I would accept that as well. And the third one angle here, the C, I, I don't need to have a protractor. Uh, I could just write down 90 degrees. I know because it has this symbol right here that's showing that this is a right angle, and a right angle is always 90 degrees. I can validate that. Let's just validate that. Let's just bring this over here. Look at that. It is 90 degrees, as well as this is going to be 142, and this is going to be 30 degrees. Measurement and geometry continues with number eight here. Examine the figures and answer the questions. So here you have to understand what the symbology means. So here it has M, this looks like an angle, B, and then equal. How do you interpret that? Well, the M stands for measure of angle B. Well, what is angle B? Here's angle B. We know the measures of angles A and C. Now, you need to remember that the total for all the interior angles of a triangle is equal to 180 degrees. So what I need to do is add this up. So 81 plus 46. So let's say 46 uh, plus 81. So 6 plus 1 is 7. 4 plus 8, or actually it's 40 plus 80, is going to give me 120. So I have 127. I subtract that from 180. Let's take a look here. Let's evaluate this equation here. So I, don't, I cannot take 7 from 0. So I have to borrow a 10 from this 10 column. That's going to be 7 and 10. 10 minus 10 ones minus 7 ones is 3 ones. 7 ones minus 2 ones. I'm sorry, 7 tens minus 2 tens is equal to 5 tens. And this comes out to 0. So my answer is going to be B is equal to 53. What? That's going to be, I got to put in that symbol or write out degrees or DEG. So it's 53 degrees is the measure of this angle B. Let's look at B here. So how many degrees in angle BCD? So BCD, so I'm looking for this angle here. Here I see this, these angles here that's telling me that these are right angles. So that's 90 degrees and 90 degrees. And that's very helpful because I know that a polygon that has four or more sides, the interior angles equals to 360 degrees. So what I need to do is add up this. This is 180 plus 40. I'll just put this up here. 180 plus 40 plus 180 is equal to 220. degrees. So and I know that I can just do that quickly. I could have just said, hey, 180 plus 40 is 220, but I wanted to write that out because then I just say, okay, well, here's 360. 
that's the total of the angles. I'm going to find this angle because I have the other three. 220. I'm going to subtract. 0 minus 0 is 0. 6 minus 2 is 4. All right? And 3, or 300 minus 200, is 100. 40. So this angle is 140, and I would say that's probably correct because right here, this is 90, and it's, let me do a, add a line here, approximately right here, so it's a, it's a measure that's greater than uh, 90 degrees. So how many degrees in angle B, C, D? It's going to be 140 degrees. When working in geometry, you're going to have to at times is draw an illustration to help you solve a problem. And one of the things that we need to do is to, it says here, draw a cube. Well, a cube is a square. Let's just say this, all these sides are equal. So what I would do is I would just draw another identical square a ways away from it that approximates this measure here. There we go. So there's my cube. It has six sides, and I'm going to say assume that, and I can even write out, assume that all uh, sides, whether it's the length, width, or height, are of equal measure to ensure that the person who's observing this is understanding that I tried to draw a cube. Number 10 here it says draw a triangular prism. Hmm. Well, it's going to be a triangle. I draw another triangle of equal size over here, and then I just connect its points similar to a cube. Here we go. There's my triangular prism. That's it for measurement and geometry. Thank you for watching this video, and please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Have a great day.